Okay. Two disclaimers. One, I am not an electrician. Not even close. Now, before you give up on me and exit out, my whole electrical system works. So if I can figure it out, you definitely can. Other disclaimer, you don't get a pretty time lapse for this entire video. You'll see me installing some wires right here, but then we're gonna move straight to just a still image of my electrical unit. I think it'll be more helpful that way. All you need to know about what's happening right now is we are running wires. We are making wire runs. I use mainly two types of wires. That's 12 and 14 gauge anchor marine grade duplex and triplex wire. Those fancy words pretty much mean that you have the negative and the positive running together, which keeps everything organized. There was a few other different gauge wires for other components that I'll make sure to have in the description. By the way, I don't talk about this, but all of the products and all of the van build videos right in the description. It's just it's easy. Click on it. There you go. Uh, biggest tip I have for wire runs is SOP. What did he say? SOP. Slack, organization, protection. Give yourself enough slack. Make sure to keep everything organized and labeled. Protect your wires. Once you have all of your wire runs to the appropriate locations, you can now start to wire up your components. The scary. When people ask me, oh, how long did it take you to set up your electrical? That's how people sound. I tell them it took two days to install and it took two months to research. So make sure you're watching other videos, you're reading other blogs. There's so much good stuff out there on how to wire up your camper van correctly. All right, now I'm gonna throw up that still image and I'm gonna kind of get out of the way too. And there we go. All right, I'll go through things one at a time and make them as simple as possible. Let me start off by saying this looks way more complicated than it actually is. And again, if I can do it, Trust me, you can do it. We'll start with batteries, which are hardly even in the picture. These two bad boys are each 200 amp hour Renogy Deep Cycle AGM 12 volt batteries. There's a ton of information out there on how to pick the right battery for you. It all depends on what you'll be charging, how much energy you'll be producing, and honestly, just in general, what kind of van life you're trying to live. There's really not a right or wrong. I will give a disclaimer about two different types of batteries. If you do go with AGM batteries to maintain their life cycle, you can only drain them down to 50%. Lithium, that's fine. 100% to zero, charge it back up. Just something to think about, when you get 400 amp hours, you really only have 200 if you're using AGM batteries. All right, let's move on to producers. So you're gonna have producers and consumers. You need components that are going to produce energy for those batteries. The first and my favorite producer of energy is my Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT charger. This is because you can't just connect the cords from the solar panel directly to the battery. This charge controller converts the energy from your solar panels into your batteries. The second producer of energy is the Sterling Pro Ultra Battery to Battery Charger. This hooks directly to our Ford Transit's house battery, which obviously that battery is connected to our alternator. That's right. So say it's not sunny on a day, we can just drive the car around in means to charge our battery bank. Pretty neat. What's nice about the Ford Transit's battery, it's actually underneath the driver's seat. You don't need to run a wire all the way up into the hood of the vehicle. My last producer of energy is essentially a glorified trickle charger. If you watched our video on shore power, you learned about this already. This is a NOCO Genius 10 amp battery charger. This is so if you're parked at a friend's house and you have an extension cord, you can plug right in and be able to charge the batteries overnight. So MPPT solar charger, battery to battery alternator charger, NOCO Genius 10 amp trickle charger. Another thing we can cross off our list here are these switches. The big one in the middle is a master switch. That's if things go real catastrophic and you just need to turn everything off. Or if you're not using the van for a few months and don't wanna be pulling any energy. These two switches are connected directly to our MPPT charger and our battery to battery charger. This way, if it's not sunny and I wanna turn off our MPPT charger and just gain energy from battery to battery charger, all I have to do is turn a switch. Okay, moving on to the consumers of the energy that we've created for our batteries. First, you have the Renogy 100 watt 12 volt pure sine wave inverter. Inverters take a 12 volt DC power and turn it into 120 volt AC power. Simplified, this allows you to power things that you would normally plug into a normal wall outlet in the house. Side note, we used these for our wall outlets and they worked really great. This way we didn't have to wire anything up specifically. We were just able to plug the male end into the female end of the inverter. The other consumer of energy is literally everything else powered in the van. Just off the top of my head, refrigerator, kitchen, bed fan, toilet fan, LED lights, water pump, USB chargers. I'm missing some, but you get the point. They all run through this. 
and they're all protected by blade fuses. Blade fuses are what you would use in your car. And then speaking of fuses, we have some larger MIDI fuses in this block right here to protect some of the bigger components and then other MIDI fuses in these two blocks right here. And then lastly, the terminal mount fuse blocks right on the battery. This is like a doomsday fuse. If all the other components blew, this would still protect our batteries. All right, the only thing I didn't mention on here was our Renogy 500 amp battery monitor. You can get a lot of really cool battery monitors. Some are Bluetooth, some are very high tech. I went with something in the middle of the road. These are important though. They allow you to track and monitor everything you need to know about your batteries. There are definitely a few more things you may need in this electrical setup. Copper lugs, different switches, lights, USB ports, even specific tools I used. All of them will be in the description. If there's one area I'm most proud of in the van, it is definitely our electrical setup. It can seem very daunting, but it's actually a lot of fun to learn. All right, knowing what I know, what would I change? What would I keep the same? I love, love, love that we have three ways to produce energy. I really think it'll keep us out of getting in a bind. We kind of always have a backup and that's a good feeling that you want on the road. The only thing I might've changed I would have gotten a higher wattage inverter. Not a lot, maybe a 2000 watt inverter. Ours is great for charging our electronics, using smaller appliances like Nutribullets or coffee grinders, but anything that asks for a higher wattage, like a toaster oven or microwave, we're pretty much out of luck. All right, there you go. Feel free to comment, ask any questions you might've had. Windows and wiring, obviously both scary projects, but some of the most satisfying. If you're enjoying the videos, Help us out, subscribe, use the links, click the like button. If you aren't enjoying the videos, then I, I wouldn't do any of those. Oh, and also don't forget all the supplies that we used in all things electrical is right below. We kept it all in one place for you. You don't have to go searching around, it's right down there. And that's all for now.